just to just for the record, your personal background, where you're from, where you're now. Where I'm currently from, or where I'm originally from. Where you're originally from. Okay. Um, I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. I lived there um, for 17 years, and I haven't lived there in 22. <laughs> so I am a Southerner by birth, so I do have a bit of an attachment to that coastal region. I've been down there lots as a child and as an adult. So when I heard about this thing, I was in Indonesia and I heard that 10,000 people had been killed. That was the first information that we got. And um, I was rather concerned for all the people I knew who lived in New Orleans. And Let me back up a little bit. Tell mm -hmm. me, what were you doing in Indonesia? Um, I went to Indonesia um, to learn to surf and um, happened to be there at the time that the tsunami hit. So I did a very small amount of uh, reconnaissance with a little Australian foundation. We went on a boat up to um, northern Sumatra and went to the island of Sumulu and um, we checked on some places coastally in Sumatra and went to some smaller villages. We didn't actually get to Aceh because the military prevented it, but um, we definitely saw some pretty wrecked villages and, and uh, took a lot of notes and took it back with us. And these guys are still continuing to work on rebuilding these areas. So it's an interesting project. And so where were you when you heard about Katrina? I was in Bali. And I saw it on the television, and it was they, it was actually the ticker on the CNN, um, it, and it said, you know, huge hurricane is at the Gulf Coast, and 10,000 people are dead in New Orleans. So we didn't really know for days what the and I I flew back. Let's see, I that was the 29th of the date of the hurricane was the 29th of August, and I flew back. To the states a couple of weeks later. Were you already planning on coming back? Yes, my visa expired. And so, um, during that intervening time, what did you learn about the storm, and, and how did that your experience in, in witnessing the tsunami frame into that <clears throat> understanding of what might have happened? I learned that it was people uh, fatality-wise considerably less thankfully um but i learned that the all the homes were flooded and it was a really different situation and tsunami everything just washed out to the ocean everything was completely gone so all the areas that we saw were just bare and there wasn't anything there anymore um what i came to learn firsthand about the gulf coast was that all the a lot of the homes were still standing and wrecked and almost in a way some of the places that I was in in Mississippi it almost seemed a blessing for the people whose houses got washed completely off their lots because at least they didn't have to deal with tearing them down or um, finding all of their stuff three lots away from where it was. Um, in some cases it seemed to be more agonizing to have have your home still standing but completely trashed. When did you first start thinking about going to the Gulf Coast? Well, I, um, I knew I would be in transition when I got back, so I knew I would go down there as soon as I, I did get back. So I didn't have a job or anything lined up, and people were still renting my house. So as soon as I was well enough to travel down there, I did. What do you mean when you say that you knew that you'd be going there right away? Um, I, it was just, the, yeah, it was the plan I had in my head. I said... Um, when I was trying to think about what I would do when I returned um, to the States, I knew that my ticket flew me back to the South, and I would certainly at least spend a few weeks. My original goal was to spend three weeks down there when I got back and then head back to my house in Jackson. You said you were in a time of transition. Why in that time did, did you think, okay, well, I'm going to come back to the United States after having been gone for what period of time and then decide I'm going to do this? Why would that be what you'd do? Um, because it's something I, I had just done. Um, I, I also, after the, um, 
After the earthquake in Neos, a lot of people didn't hear about that one. It happened in March. It was an 8.6, and I went up to Gunningsatoli and spent about three weeks up there as well. And um, I've also been in Africa and worked in a hospital twice there, just doing construction and um, uh, general you know, um, uh, AIDS-related education, things like that. And um, Obviously, as I said, I grew up there. I have kind of a connection to it. I knew I wanted to go to New Orleans and see how friends and family were doing there, and um, it just seemed like the right thing to do, <laughs> of course. I mean, you know, I knew I could lend a hand, and I knew I had some experience with it, so like I said, I was only planning to do it for three weeks. So what happened? You got back stateside, and, and how did you end up choosing where you went? Um, I looked, I think, as a lot of people did, for a group online that was um, a secular organization, a non-faith-based. Um, so would that be secular or non-secular? I do either. Yeah. I looked for a non-faith-based organization. <laughs> I looked for one that would take whoever and didn't, um, I didn't have to... I wasn't required to have any sort of religion or prayer or anything involved with it that would be um, something where all different types of people were there together with a common cause that didn't necessarily have to focus around Jesus. And so what did you find? A little group out of North Carolina called Disaster Corps. And they were started um, after Hurricane Floyd. The woman who's the director of it, Stephanie Spencer, her, she lost her home in Floyd. And I can't remember if they had nine days of 15 feet of standing water or 15 days of nine feet of standing water, you know, but they all lost lost their homes in that hurricane in Tarboro. And um, so she started the group, and this was really their first major deployment or first major thing they had done. Um, they had sent some things to Florida before, but they had never really actually made a plan to get on the ground and work. So I emailed them and said I was going to go down, and they told me where to go, and I arrived, and yeah. When did you get there, and what did you find? When I got there, I found that they were having a bit of a crisis in management, and um, they were a bit disorganized. Uh, because Stephanie and um, Becky and the rest of the folks were in North Carolina and the person that they had left in charge was having a little bit of trouble pulling it all together and um, kind of had her hands in a lot of different things and organizationally was having difficulty focusing on and figuring out what would be a good um, what would be a good project for the group to do and they really needed to to kind of pull it together and say, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a distribution center. We're going to clean houses. We're going to tear houses down. Whatever they chose, they couldn't do it all. It was much too small, and they needed to pick one thing. So um, I agreed to stay on longer than my original commitment and uh, kind of pulled it together where we decided to just focus mainly on cleaning and gutting houses and getting them ready for rebuilds. So we didn't touch homes that were um, slated for demo. We would go inside of them uh, if it was a safe situation and, and try to reclaim items for the homeowners, but um, we, we basically focused on getting ones that were still viable, cleaned up, and ready to rebuild. Pull back for just a minute and frame out the. Um, we got a little blonde hair there. So How shocking! <laughs> I, I I have so little hair. Where did that come? From? I don't know. Where have you been? Um, frame out. People, I don't think, have the faintest fucking clue what the situation was like. So if you could describe in. And by the way, one of the things that we've been asking people to do is is don't presume how we think you think we might want people you to talk. Mm -hmm. Just speak however you normally speak, mm -hmm. and sit, use whatever language you normally use. Yes. Um, that's going to work a lot better for us. Mm -hmm. But describe like what the Gulf Coast looked like, what shape it was in, how decisions were getting made, what sort of supplies or whatever was going on down there. 
give people a sense of what it 